Hey, this is Onesto, and I'm going to show you why Sublab XL is the ultimate bass plugin, especially for beginners. Real quick, what is this thing? Sublab XL is a plugin from Future Audio Workshop. It has three synth engines, five effects, and lots of other tools that'll help you design any subs or synth bass that you can think of. In a minute, I'll show you my workflow, but let's start with the really fun part and go through some presets. Make sure you're listening on speakers or headphones that'll let you hear and feel those low frequencies inside your soul. All right, here we go. That was a lot of fun. If you want to learn more about Sublab XL, just click my affiliate link down below. All right, time to show you how to use Sublab XL. I'll show you my workflow by designing something from scratch. My workflow is typically something like this. Start with the synth sound, adjust settings in the modulation section, add some effects, add the X sub, filter your sound, and possibly add in a sample noise, maybe add in some LFO modulation, and then do some EQ and finish it off with the limiter. To start, you gotta know that Sublab XL has three different sound engines. There's a synth engine with five different oscillators, a sample engine with tons of samples to choose from, and the X sub engine, which makes sure that you always keep your notes in the sub range. The synth engine is where we'll start. Out of these five oscillators, I feel like using the triangle wave today is one of those days, I guess. Now let's we'll start making some decisions in the modulation section. You have the volume tab, which is pretty much the ADSR, the pitch tab, which is often used to give the sub a transient to capture the mix, a filter mod, which will affect the filter opening and closing, and an LFO here that you can assign to two different parameters and a glide that's always fun to use. Let's quickly adjust some of these to make our sound more interesting. First, we gotta adjust the ADSR, which is down here in the volume envelope. Yeah, I think that's the kind of volume envelope I want. Something like a little straightforward and versatile, for now at least. Let's add in some pitch modulation so I can get that little transient I was talking about. Usually you want a super quick envelope like that. So it sounds like this. That little transient is quick and nice and, and more felt than heard. Okay, I don't think I want any filter or LFO modulation quite yet, but I do want some glide. I don't know about you, but I really, really like when I can see and hear what's happening. All right, that's nowhere near a bass, but don't worry, we will get there soon. From here, I'll put on an effect or two. My goal right now is to design a sound that I'm really into before I start running through a filter. So in this case, I want to use a distortion. The Crusher is, is also really cool. And I'll use a tape at the end. Let's hear that before and after. Before the effects. After the effects. Now let's start adding in some sub frequencies with the X sub. This is a unique oscillator from Sublab XL that's designed to get some sub frequencies to punch through on any kind of speaker. I like it because it adds a sub bass on your main bass line instantly, and it sounds really good. Here's how it sounds on its own. And uh, let's bring back our synth. Cool, and to balance between any of the sound layers, there's a mixer down here that you can use. Yeah, that X sub is just right, and that was super, super easy. Okay, I think it's time to throw on the filter. You have uh, three different filters to choose from. I don't know where in the multiverse they'll be selecting band or high pass, but in this timeline, we're gonna be using the low pass filter. Just click and drag where you want. Make sure you bring in your synth and the mix amount here. I still think I wanna hear some of that distortion buzz, so I'll keep it around here. I also want this filter to follow what I'm playing, so I'm gonna activate the key track. Let's hear before the filter. 
And after the filter, we are almost done. Thanks so much for sticking with me. Now, the one thing that's missing, I think this sound needs a little bit more attack, some kind of noise layer to kick off the sub. So we'll finally go back to the sampler and select something that's kind of like a kick. How about this reverse distorted kick? Yeah, I think that's helping. So the sampler has a bunch of common sampler controls, but one thing that's unique in Sublab XL is this impact control. It's kind of like a maximizer limiter kind of thing. It makes the sample sound like it's hitting harder. Before the sample, and after it. And let's add in some LFO modulation, cause why not? Let's do something really simple and obvious because there's nothing wrong with that. Let's use a sine wave, assign it to the synth and X sub mixes. We can get some wobble in there. All right, cool. The last thing we'll do is move on to the EQ here and shape our tone. Yeah, that, that sounds better. And let's adjust this limiter here to make it extra loud and impactful. And we are done. Now, there is one thing I did not show you, which was making use of these macros. You can click and drag this to most parameters, adjust the range, and then you're set. It's a useful feature, but I just didn't feel like using it in this demo. So as you're building out your track, you wanna make sure that your kick and sub aren't fighting each other. There's a great affordable plug in the house with this called Kickstart 2. Learn all about it by clicking the video here. And please like and subscribe so more music makers find this channel. Thanks for watching, later.